Okay. So in this world of WhatsApp forwards, I'll remind you of one which we have seen multiple times, that you're born twice, once your biological birth, and second, when you realized why you were born. I want to ask you an honest question. How many of us know why we were born? Do we know? Because the fact of the matter is that 99.9% .9 of us in this world come and go, ironically, without realizing why we were born. And just because we are the CEO of our company, or become the managing director or head of HR of some company, and made a lot of money and we can travel anywhere, that is not true satisfaction. So today I'm going to talk to you about two things. One, my love for the country of Japan. And two, my, my own story in my own company, Bajaj Capital. So I'll start with my own story. Two years ago, as a family, we took a decision that we want to professionalize our company because guess what? It is becoming a digital world in financial services or wealth management. If we don't professionalize, and I stood on one of the stage in the Entrepreneur Forum and I said, if we brothers don't professionalize our company and don't fire ourselves from this job, we don't have the skills, our company will be extinct. So guess what we did? We unemployed ourselves. So next day, we were trying to figure out, I was trying to think, what should I do with my life? And all my life, I had been thinking, if I, at the age of 20, ripe age of 20, had not sleepwalked into my father's office in Connaught Place on a hot summer morning, what would I have done with my life? And at the age of 30, I used to think, you know, I'm a creative guy. I could become a manager in a marketing company or whatever. So that was my 30s. But here at 47, I was in this true struggle in my mind that what is it I true, truly love and what is it that I am passionate about. So guess what? My mind started meandering into the space of study of human longevity. And I said, what the hell? Pinch, pinch, Mr. Rajiv. What the hell are you doing? You're a financial services guy. Find something new in this space. That is what you've done for 30 years of your life. But my mind would again go into human longevity. So when you are on the path of finding your ikiga and our subject for the day, there is one sign. Sign is that you get into a state of flow and you have forgotten a sense of space and time and you think one hour has elapsed and you, you say, what the heck? I've even missed my lunch and it's four hours. So you know, it is that sense of flow and I used to get into that sense of flow. I'm on the computer, I'm studying. So my um, I have some problems, you know, that if I get into something, I'm, I'm interested in a lot of things, but at a superficial level. So I do anything that moves, I eat anything that moves, I want to go anywhere that is worth visiting, but at a very superficial level, just for an experience. But something I'm truly passionate about, I deep dive into. So the concept of human longevity was something I was truly interested in, and I deep dive. So what did I do? I went to a blue zone. National Geographic has this concept of five identified blue zones. Population of highest living, longest living healthy people in the world. So I went to Okinawa in Japan and met up with these two girls, Mio-san, 93, Fuji-san, 101, sister-in-laws, bickering every five minutes, you know, swearing at each other in Japanese, but totally in love with each other. So one of their ikigai or, or life purpose is to be with each other, spend at least four hours a day together. And Mio-san, on the left, you see these fruits in the front? She took me to her farm. We together, in a quarter of an acre farm, we plucked the fruits together, and she fed me like her grandchild, and she made me sit. Hindi mein jaise bolte hain, ye khao, ye khao, ye khao. Like your grand grandparents feed you. So she fed me like her grandchild. We sat there, it was a beautiful day out. So you know, that is something it made me think. I had gone on a quest, on a journey to understand why do people live long healthy. And Okinawa, I had heard, they have beautiful concepts. You know, there are so many Japanese concepts I study. They have this concept of harahachi bu, which is, you know, you eat only 80% of your capacity. And there have been researches and researches. But what is the real reason why these people live to 100? So let's park it there. My next visit was to Loma Linda in California, 60 kilometers away from Los Angeles. And you see these two people on the left, Dorothy and uh, Dan. 
Now, both in their mid-80s, this young man and young girl were, after meeting me, going to go for water aerobics class. And they do a different form of workout every day. See their level of fitness, fitter than many of us here. And they, and they are buddies, they work out in tandem. That is their ikigai. That is what wakes, up, wakes them up in the morning. So, what is Ikigai? Now, many of us have read this famous book which came out recently, but again, you know, these are all very superficial understandings of the concept of Ikigai. Translated, Iki, iki means life, Kai means flow. Combination of these words, life flow. Purpose of life, reason for being, reason for waking up. These are the English words and definitions and translations of Ikigai. Now, I want to tell you something English is a very, very poor language to understand the depth of Japanese culture. So let me try, try to now come to, you know, my love for Japan. I've been there nine times, and I tell you that it took me first two or three times, I just sleepwalked into that country. It was just like coming in, going out for a conference, not figuring out head or tail. By the fourth or fifth time, I realized there's something special about this culture. You in Tokyo, you ask somebody on the street, can you please tell me where is Uniqlo store? So what they'll do is, they will start walking with you. You say, sir, please tell me, I'll go myself. No, 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 they'll walk you. And guess what, how far the store is? Half a kilometer away. And it happens again, and it happens again. So you know the level of compassion? Now what is it? You know their love for environment, the way they keep things clean, the Shintoism, their beliefs, the Japanese Buddhism, Indian connection, you know, the, the whole mindfulness thing, being in the moment. Okinawa in Japan, let me go back to my jog my memory back to Okinawa. I stayed in an Airbnb house for a week because I wanted local experience. I wanted to meet local people. My guide used to take me and my translator used to take me to people's houses every day. And that's when I decided I want to, rest of my life, I don't want to visit places. I want to visit people. And and. You know, there I used to see this man opposite my house take his little boxy, you know, Suzuki out every morning. He must be 95 years of age. He used to take out his Maruti and, and you know, Suzuki, go out at 6 a.m., come back at 6 p.m. Now, I don't know whether he was a carpenter, he was a craftsman, but I know he was going to follow his Ikigai. So that is the beauty of this culture. And, you know, these people wake up every day, you know, concepts like Kaizen, they, you know, they, they believe in perfection, they strive for perfection, but they know life is wabi-sabi, imperfect, imperfect. They sleep well every day. So that's where the concept of ikigai, I assume, has also emerged. But my curiosity was not to die. So it took me back to Tokyo to meet Professor uh, Akihiro Hasegawa of Toyo Aiwa University. Now, I fixed up an appointment with him, and my colleague here, you know, fixed up my meeting, and he said, in your very nice introduction, I read that your passion for Ikigai and your research, and you've been doing it for seven, eight years, so I came to meet you. Now, I didn't realize, like any Japanese person, the poor fellow is like somebody coming from Meerut to Delhi. He had come from Kanagawa specially to see me and, and speak to me. Now, Professor Hasegawa, there's some, one unique thing about him. He is the only man in the world I know who has done PhD in Ikigai. And he has got his whole, you know, that block of research all in Japanese. He says, if you can get it translated, if you're too interested, you can read it. So I read a bit of it, I translated a bit of it. And what I found, what he taught me was his model of objects and feelings. Now our objects are our past experiences, memories, roles, our present, our health, hobby, family, friends, our future. It can be about growth of our family, our vision, events in our life, and our feelings. How, are we, how do we feel about these things? You know, our sense of existence, our motivation to live, self-fulfillment in everyday life. So it's like, you know, the Maslow's hierarchy needs. After a while, how much of money can you earn? After a while, you need self-actualization. You need a sense of ful uh, fulfillment. So I ask you this question. If any of you, you may be earning enough, you may be traveling all over the world, but if you feel sometimes a sense of emptiness at the bottom of the heart, then you need to research this deeper. When sometimes on a Friday morning, you just 
kept pre keep pressing the alarm back down and you don't want to wake up, you may be the CEO of your company, but that means you are not following your Ikigai. But because when you're following your Ikigai, you should jump out of bed, leap out of bed and be raring to go and half an hour in your alpha state, your ideas, ideas must be rolling and by the time you brush your teeth, you've written your next business plan. So the concept of uh, object and feelings is a great framework to start thinking about Ikigai. Now, Charulata Patel, this young lady at 87 has become very famous in the Cricket World Cup 2019. I asked myself this question, is Charulata following her Ikigai when she on a wheelchair goes to a stadium to watch cricket? Possibly, because Ikigai is a convergence of your passion, your mission, your profession, and your vocation. When all four converge, that is what your Ikigai is. And that is what brings us, whenever you Google Ikigai and you look at images, this is what comes up. So it is what you are good at, what you love, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. So now let me come back to my own story when I was going through that discovery phase. I'm a guy who's an explorer, as I said. I love to travel. And I'm analytical. If I like something, I, that's what I'm good at. That's what my skill is. I'm very analytical. I go deep into the concept. I got interested in the concept of human longevity. And it, it, if I study it and if I spread the word around like forums like these, it will help people. It will help other people. And I want to make money. Because I know this is not an NGO. This is not a, a non-profit because I know the most commercial and impacting organizations in the world have been commercial organizations. So therefore, there are different models, there are different ways of doing it. What stops me from building a social enterprise around Ikigai? Going deeper, I want to, what I do now, I run workshops on Ikigai. So what I do is I take 12 people at a time. It's very hard for me to do it for 100, 200 people, for, but 12 people at a time. So now what we do is, and you can try it with a group of 12 friends, what you can do is sit down, just make a little list of things. Yeah, just like a little diary back of your pocket and write down whatever you love doing. Wherever you're getting into a sense of flow, just write it down. Whatever you just, it, it really touched your heart, it warmed your heart, just write it down. That's, that's the starting point. Second, whatever you, you love doing it, Somebody compliments you. Listen, you are a great communicator. Your friend, your boss, your well-wisher. Whenever somebody compliments you, write it down. Whatever cause really touched your heart, brought tears to your eyes, think about it. Write it down. And soon you will be walking the path towards Ikigai, finding your Ikigai. And guess what? When you do it in a workshop format like we do with 12 people, and when 12 people hear each other's views, what they have written in the line, it, all, it only takes five minutes to write down. And when 12 people hear each other, it, it really starts a journey. You don't find your Ikigai, but you start your journey of finding your Ikigai. Guess what? You know, your Ikigai can come as a big bang if you are lucky in an hour of thinking, but it is a multi-year journey. And you need to feel fortunate that even if you get start today at the age of 50, on the path of finding your Ikigai and you find it in next 10 years, you're very lucky because there are many people, 99% of population of, of this world who will come and go without finding their Ikigai. <laughs> Wish you all the best. <laughs>